Hello everyone. Today we have with us the renowned surgeon Dr. Arvind Kumar who is currently the director of Institute of Robotic Surgery and is the chairman for Center of Chest Surgery and Lung Transplantation at Sir Gangaram Hospital New Delhi. Dr. Arvind Kumar did his MBBS and MS from Ames New Delhi and he is the first person to start the thoracoscopic surgery in the mid 90s at Ames New Delhi. He is also credited to be the first person to start first robotic chest surgery again at Ames in the year 2008. In the year 2012, Dr. Kumar moved to Sir Gangaram Hospital and in a, in a year he started the Thoracic Surgery Fellowship Program in India. Dr. Arvind Kumar was awarded with Dr. V. Ramalinga Swami Prize for being the best undergraduate of the year and was also nominated for Sir Hiralal Medal for being the best postgraduate of the year in the year 1984. We really thank Dr. Arvind Kumar to be with us and to answer a few questions and queries that we have in, on behalf of the doctors at Doplexes. So to begin with, we would really like to know what prompted you to opt for robotic chest surgery and was you always keen to go for the advanced techniques that made you or you are inclined towards this technique? Okay. Uh, chest surgery has been uh, my chosen field of interest since early 90s. And uh, when we started going deeper and deeper into chest surgery, initially we started with open surgery. But then there were uh, in the late 80s and early 90s, uh, there was this third revolution which hit the field of surgery. That was the uh, laparoscopic surgery and we thought we are in the right position to apply this new development to chest surgery also and that's what prompted me into going for training in thoracoscopic surgery and starting the country's first formal regular uh, thoracoscopic program at Ames in uh, mid 90s. And continuing with the development, when the robotic surgery came into the picture, we thought that uh, why not we incorporate this technology also. And that's how we went to several centers abroad, trained ourselves. And in 2008, we started the country's first robotic chest surgery program also. Great. So from your experience, can you please tell us the basic difference, technical differences between keyhole robotic surgery, thoracic surgery and open thoracic surgery? Yes, uh, open thoracic surgery involves cutting, making a big cut in the chest. You first cut the skin, you cut all the muscles and then the most important difference between chest and abdomen is that in abdomen you have only muscles in the wall, there is no bone. Whereas in the chest we have these bones which are forming the rib cage and if you want to put your hand inside you have to move these ribs away to be able to make enough space for the two hands to go. Now imagine bones are hard structures. So when they are moved away, they are not pliable structures which will bend or uh, bold like that. Sometimes when you are moving them away, they break. So we do the procedure and at the end again using an instrument, we bring the ribs back into normal position and sew it up with a thick thread or sometimes steel wire. So when you do open surgery in the chest, it involves a lot of trauma on the patient's body just to be able to get your hands inside to be able to do the procedure. So it's a logical step that comes to your mind that if we can get something inside and do the procedure without the need to open the chest, it would be very much in the patient's interest. And that's what prompted us to take up thoracoscopic surgery, where instead of a big cut, we make two or three or four small, small five millimeter to 10 millimeter holes. We don't put our hands inside. We put the telescope inside. We put specialized instruments inside. And the same operation is carried out without cutting any muscle or without cutting any bone. So overall, the trauma to the patient's body is 
significantly less. In fact, the difference between open and keyhole in the abdomen is much less than the difference between open and keyhole in the chest because of the ribs being there the the thoracotomy is a very very painful and very traumatic instrument so that's how we move to thoracoscopic surgery but thoracoscopic surgery the disadvantage was that we were operating by looking at the tv monitor so we only had a 2d vision the instruments were limited and especially in the chest you have the uppermost part and the lowermost part so reaching all the parts of the chest with straight rigid instruments sometimes was very difficult and we were not able to carry out a certain maneuvers in depth area and that's where the robotic addition made a whole lot of difference because the robot gives the operating surgeon a three dimensional high definition vision which is almost like actually being inside the chest the vision is so good everything is so real you feel as if you are actually sitting in the chest that's number one number two the instruments have got a wrist like attachment so if you have to reach the nooks and corners of the chest and carry out very fine intricate movements very close to beating heart which is there in the chest it's possible to do it with the robot but many times it was not possible to do it with thoracoscopy so to summarize open surgery big cut big incision thoracoscopic surgery small cut small incisions but limitation about being able to carry out complex maneuvers robotic surgery small cuts small incisions three dimensional vision ability to carry out everything that you can carry out with the hand so you can imagine robot is actually the best thing to happen in the field of chest surgery so you have also been practicing laparoscopic techniques from over 3 decades now so can you please elaborate a uh, little differences among the robotic surgery and the laparoscopic surgery see robotic surgery also is a form of keyhole surgery the difference between the conventional keyhole surgery which is used the word used in abdomen is laparoscopy and the word used in chest is thoracoscopy so whether it is laparoscopic surgery in the abdomen or thoracoscopic surgery in the chest the conventional keyhole surgery you see on the tv monitor using a standard telescope and you operate using standard straight rigid instruments so as i said you lose three dimensional vision you only have length and breadth you don't have the depth perception and the instruments have certain limitations as far as the complex movements are concerned but when you add a robotic technology to the laparoscopic or thoracoscopic method so you move from 2d vision to a 3d high definition vision so you look much better you are able to see much better and it's very it's a common sense that if you are seeing the tissues better you will be able to do a better job secondly the instruments allow you to do many more complex maneuvers in deep inaccessible areas which were very difficult to do with the laparoscopy so the fundamental difference between conventional laparoscopic or thoracoscopic surgery and robotic surgery is that you are now doing surgery under three dimensional vision you do you see 3d and you have instruments which have the ability to reach the farthest and the depth areas of the body and carry out complex maneuvers without any difficulty so it makes a huge difference when you are doing a complex surgery so then are there any strong yeah. indications for robotic keyhole surgery oh yes yes there are robot robot is just a tool it's not a procedure specific uh, tool it's a tool which you can use to enhance your capabilities of carrying out any operation so it's applied across various disciplines in the field of thoracic surgery we use this extensively for carrying out thymectomy operation for patients of myasthenia gravis we use it for carrying out thymectomy for patients of thymoma and i'm very happy to happy to report here that when it comes to tumors like thymoma initially with thoracoscopy we were a only able to handle small tumors any tumor which is big or which is infiltrating into the surrounding structures 
we could not handle thoracoscopically but with robotic assistance today we are able to handle even large tumors tumors which are involving the pericardium the phrenic nerve the lung all these we are able to handle with robotic method because of the wide range of manipulation which is offered by the instruments and we do as good a job with robot as we do with open surgery we don't compromise on the principles of resection but it's just that the addition of robot actually allows you to carry out these procedures as well at robotic as you do at open surgery so these are the applications in the field of chest apart from that we are using it for doing lobectomies for lung cancer we are using it for doing esophagectomy for cancers of the esophagus that is the food pipe and we are also using it for various cysts and other tumors in the chest so it's finding a lot of applications in the field of chest so uh, what are the distinctive factors in the perioperative management for the patients undergoing robotic thoracic surgeries and what should the doctors expect the management basically remains the same the management is of a patient who has undergone that procedure so if the patient has undergone thymectomy or an esophagectomy or a lobectomy the post op management is just like the management for that patient who has undergone an open surgery it's not different but the major difference lies is that because the trauma on the patient body is much less so conventionally a large thymoma will be operated by a mid sternotomy or a tumor will be operated by a thoracotomy now when we avoid a thoracotomy and a sternotomy and do by keyhole the patient's trauma is less so they have less pain post op they have less blood loss their hospital stay is much shorter most of these patients are able to go home on second or third post operative day and most importantly they are able to return to gainful employment in about a week's time so there is a huge difference in the post operative period complications outcome and return to work between open surgery and robotic surgery so then are there any disorders contraindicating for thoracic keyhole thoracic surgeries uh the contraindications for robotic surgery are the same as contraindications for thoracoscopic surgery there are no robot specific contraindication the major contraindication for us is that if the patient has had extensive tuberculosis in the past and lung is densely stuck to the chest wall and we are not able to separate it now those are the cases which we cannot do with robot i must say that in the beginning when we started about 15 years back this was a major problem for us but over the times that we have gained the experience now it's a relative contraindication for us and a large number of cases where we do encounter adhesions in the beginning we are able to manage these adhesions other than that there are no robot specific contraindications any tumor which is very huge and is infiltrating into lot of structures obviously cannot be managed by robotic method it has to go for open surgery sure so uh, have you found in your practice that the possible complications like surgical site infections and the burden of medications they can all be a little sorted out with robotic keyhole thoracic surgery oh yes to a great extent there is a huge difference uh in the incidence of surgical site infection between open surgery and robotic surgery the the cuts to the patients are to the tune of 3 or 4 1 to 2 cm size incisions and it's a rarity to see any of the robotic surgery wounds getting infected now we used to see infection of thoracotomy wound or sternotomy wound every now and then in the open era but with robotic uh, method small wounds the incidence of surgical site infection is much less the blood transfusion requirements are less the pain killer requirements are less the antibiotics are being given for shorter period so overall i think in terms of medication there is a significant advantage in favor of patient with the robotic surgery so with ever advancing technologies so there's a need to adapt to this advancing surgical methods mm -hmm. so what should be your uh, suggestions for the career options if doctors or surgeons wish to uh, continue with the robotic surgery robotic thoracic surgery as career 
See, robotic surgery is not a separate field. Many a times people say, sir, we want to specialize. We want to specialize in robotic surgery. So I repeat what I said in the beginning. Robot is not a separate discipline of surgery. Robot is a tool which is available to every discipline of surgery to augment, to enhance the surgeon's ability to be able to carry out complex tasks inside the body especially in inaccessible areas so urology thoracic surgery gynecology general surgery vascular surgery minimal access surgery cancer surgery uh, there are so many fields where pediatric surgery where this procedure is being applied so if you want to go into robotic surgery you have to choose the discipline first. You cannot choose robotic surgery as a discipline and say that I carry out robotic surgery on every organ from head to toe. Now that's not possible. You have to be from a particular discipline. Say I'm a thoracic surgeon. Yes, I do open surgery. I do thoracoscopic surgery and I also use robot as a tool to enhance my capabilities in a subset of population. Similarly, a urologist will do an open surgery, a laparoscopic surgery as well as a robotic when the indication and the same thing applies to other fields also. So you have to choose your field and within that field, you want to add robot also as a tool. It's a great tool to add and I think in coming years, it's going to see more and more application already in the last four years there has been almost an explosion in the number of uh, these machines installed in our country and the coming few years are going to see a further increase in the application of robotic surgery which is for the good of our patients. We really wish the same. So lastly we would really like to ask that such a big community of 135,000 doctors as Doc uh, how can it contribute in learning these continuous education of these advanced avenues in the field of even surgery or medicine? See, Doc Plexus is playing a very important role because we are living in an era of information revolution, you know, all the time information explosion. There's so much of information. And I think what Doc Plexus is doing a great job is to reach out to specialists in, 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 in various disciplines and conduct such kind of interviews and then share this interview with the colleagues uh, across the country on the net platform where people can view and benefit from the experience of the experts. So I think Docplexus is doing a great job and I wish you good luck. I hope you continue with this great work. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. And we are really thankful you for that you shared your insightful thoughts on the robotic keyhole surgeries. And I'm really sure that our surgeons are looking forward to this interview and even our other doctors as well. Sure. And I also want to wish to convey that if anyone is interested in uh, moving further into the field of robotic surgery, we at the Institute of Robotic Surgery at Sir Gangaram Ho Hospital are always very happy to welcome guests and our colleagues from any of the disciplines that I have mentioned. And should you vis wish to visit our center, we'll be more than happy to host you here. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. These interviews and events are featured by Docplexes exclusively for the doctors of Docplexes community. To receive updates regarding such upcoming events, please subscribe and like our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Happy Docplexing!